Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and Unity has just released a brand new, gorgeous looking 2D sample project. This one is called Dragon Crashers. It's completely free, you can download it off the asset store. The sample projects are always excellent to see how Unity themselves use their own tools. And this is also a great way to see all of the tools that are available as part of Unity. There's quite a few that you might not even know about. This one uses pretty much every 2D tool in the engine. So it's got bone-based 2D animation, inverse kinematics, gorgeous lighting effects, cinematics, sprite shapes, and tons, tons more. If you want to learn how to make your 2D games look even better, then you should study this sample project to see everything they've built here. Let's first look at the game itself, and then we're going to inspect the editor and see how it's all built. This video is sponsored by Unity. Check out the Asset Store Spring Sale happening right now, with 500 of the most popular assets, all with a 50% discount. Pick up some awesome assets for your games or some tools to help you build them faster. I've picked up the Polygon Fantasy Kingdom myself for a house building system I'm working on. Add some destruction to your games with Rayfire. Create some smooth vector graphics with the shapes package. Easily handle saving and loading with the save system. Use the top down engine to get a prototype up and running quickly. Or get a massive pack with 4000 fantasy icons. There's tons of assets on sale, so I'm sure you'll find something perfect just for you. There's also daily deals with a deeper discount at 70% off. They change every day, so check out the calendar to see which assets are on which day. And you can also get a bonus 5 or 10% off depending on your total with the coupon SPRING2021. So go ahead, check out all the assets on sale with the link in the description. Alright, so right away we've got a very nice but simple main menu. It's got some great sound design with the logo and a whole bunch of particles. So we just click and it starts to load. Alright, so right away we see a nice intro with a really fun cinematic. So there it is, a really fun intro. Now the game itself is an idle auto battler, so it's a great way to showcase all of these animations and effects. So the characters are constantly attacking, and over here we see some circular bars constantly growing. As soon as they grow, they can use a special, so this one right here, there you go, a really awesome special. So all these effects look really awesome, and I gotta say I really love the sound design here. Then yep, all of them go down, and there we go, we've got a nice victory. So we can go into the next battle. Alright, so now it's a boss fight against a very angry dragon. And yep, down goes the boss dragon. Alright, so that's a demo. As you can see, it's a vertical slice that demonstrates tons of awesome 2D tools in action. So now let's inspect it and learn to see how all of this works. Like I said, you can download the project files for yourself from the asset store, it's completely free. This one is meant to be used with Unity 2020.2 or the 2020.3 LTS version, which is what I'm using in here. Okay, so here we are in the editor, and right away you see a helm folder and inside there we've got a real nice readme file. So here it explains what the demo is about and also has a whole bunch of links to learn some more. So you've got a bunch of resources where they say they will be adding some tutorials based on this demo. You've got the previous demo, the Lost Script, which also showcases a ton of gorgeous 2D lights. Then you've got a webinar which went through some of the features on that demo. Then to the character animation, a bunch of tips and so on. And of course you can chat with the team directly over on the Unity forums. Alright, so here is the first battle scene. We can inspect all of these objects. You can see all of these nice gizmos and icons. For example, this icon that you see everywhere, this is a sprite shape. This is a really awesome tool for making some custom shapes. 
So for example, one of the main ones you see here is over here, this minecart. And then over here on the side, you also see the bridge. So in terms of texture, we can go and look at it. And as you can see, it's just a normal horizontal texture. So this is the bridge texture. But when working with spread shapes, we can click in here in order to edit a spline. And there you go, we see all these points. And I can add a new point, move it up, move it down, and so on. So it takes a basic texture and creates pretty much any shape you want with it. So here is the very weird bridge. And the same thing over here for the minecart. This is a super useful tool for making some weird shapes based on some standard textures. It's handled by this sprite shape controller script. And if you click on each point, you can even see tons of options. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So this is one use for sprite shapes. But another use is over here, these pillars that you see. Yep, look at that. This one is also a sprite shape. So instead of making this weird shape as a separate texture, you just use this. And these ones showcase how you can have a different fill sprite and edge sprite. So you can see how the edge is faded, which makes it look slightly blurry. And if we inspect over here the sprite shape profile, we can see how it's set up with a certain film texture, which is just a black texture, and then a black soft edge, which is our edge texture. There you go, like that. And here you can also play around with angles to have different sprites for different shapes. You can play around with the offset, set the fill or not, and so on. So that's Sprite Shape, a really awesome tool for easily making some super adaptable shapes. Another thing you notice right away in this demo are these tiny little green dots. These are 2D bones and 2D IK in action. So for example, if I grab the skeleton sword and I move, yep, there you go, the shoulder and arm moves correctly with it. And if you click on the object themselves, we can actually see the bones. And for example, if I grab his pelvis and I just move him around and there you go, you can see all of the IK in action. So all of those points, those are the target points and it automatically calculates everything needed in order to make the bones hit that position. So using 2D IK is super useful for animation. Then for how all of the body parts are set up, this is using another 2D tool, it's the PSD importer. So if we click on it, we can see that this character skeleton is a PSB file. And if we open it, here it is, the character open up inside of Photoshop. Now, usually when making a sprite sheet, what you would do would be separate all of the body parts and then slate the texture. But here, as you can see, it's set up like a normal character. So all of the body parts are exactly where they should be. So this is the PSD importer in action. It reads all of the separate layers and automatically separates them and uses them as body parts. So there's no need for you to make some weird sprite sheets with all of the body parts separated. You just draw your character like normal, separate all the layers, and then in Unity, when it imports, we can go up here to open up the sprite editor. And yep, Unity automatically splits them up into a proper sprite sheet. So you can see how this is super useful for making characters without having to work with all of the body parts separate. Then another 2D feature they're using is normal maps. So on the sprite editor, you can go here to see some secondary textures. And then you can see it's got a normal map and a mess texture. And if we click on it, yep, here is the normal map, which then interacts with all of the 2D lights. Then over here on the sprite editor, another thing we can see is the skinning editor. So this is where you can set up all of the bones in their area of influence. You can see how all of these impact different parts of the sprite. So you can see just how many different tools they use in order to bring these characters to life. Then also the first thing that happened as soon as the battle loads is a nice cutscene. So this one is handled by timeline. So over here inside cutscenes we've got the timeline intro skeletons. If you double click over here on the timeline, this opens up the timeline window where you can see all of the events. So Timeline is another super useful tool that will help you greatly in making cinematics for your game. So you've got this bar where you can input all kinds of actions. So there you go, look at everything happening. They intro, they go in, they move, and so on. You've got tracks where you can input all the various things. So here they're using a track for the UI, another one for the camera, for some animations, audio objects, and so on. And something which works very well with the Timeline is over here the cameras which are using virtual cameras. So they're using Cinemachine. So first it starts off with the entrance camera. Then it goes into the zoom in camera, then it goes the camera down to the right side, then it zooms in and then to the left and then the battle. And the UI as well, which on the end, the UI suddenly pops up. And finally, when the timeline actually ends, so when the cutscene timeline is finished, then it goes into this script and calls on this function to actually start the battle. So if you've got cutscenes in your game, then you should learn how timeline works. It can definitely save you a ton of time. And of course, another thing that this game showcases is very good use of 2D lighting. So as you may know, there are all kinds of 2D lights you can use. For example, there's that gem there, and it's got a freeform light on top. Look at that, so the light has this shape. So it's placed over there in order to really brighten up that gem. 
Then you've got a spotlight like this one over here on the entrance, so you can play around with all of these. So these two lights are really awesome. And another interesting thing that they did was to make some lights only affect the background and some only the character. So for example, over here, there's actually two lights placed one on top of the other one. So this one, as you can see, targets for layers. This one is only affecting the characters. And if I move this, you can also see over there the normal maps being impacted on the characters. So look at that. As I move the light, it moves where the light actually hits. If I select all the lights and just disable them, yep, you see the difference that it makes. Then they also use line renderers in some interesting ways. So over here you see this thing which seems like a bit of smoke going left and right. So this one is just a basic line renderer. So it's using that, it's got a certain width, a color, and so on. And then down here it is simply using a material using a custom shader made in Shadowgra. So this one is just a basic shader that uses the time node in order to constantly move and change the offset over time. Then another Shadowgraph effect you see is over here this little waterfall. So that's also handled by a shader. And also this one up here which is like a spider web waving in the wind. This one is also using Shadowgraph, which again, if you want to know how all of these work, you can edit and you can see exactly how all of these shaders were created. Then one tool that I'm sure you're already familiar with is the 2D tile map. So over here, they also used it for the background. So like that, that's a background set up using tiles. I've covered this one in a dedicated video previously, if you want to learn more. Then another element of this demo is the UI. Interestingly, they went with a screen space canvas, but using a camera, so it matches up perfectly with the scene. The UI itself is all some pretty basic stuff. So for example, the health bars themselves, they are just sliders, so there you go. And for the ring ability, it is also just a basic image. And over here, it's set to filmed, radial 360, so then you got the fill amount and you just move it. And then of course, it just has a custom material, which really just has an HDR light in order to give it a nice glow. So on the UI itself, nothing too special, just looking great. And the last thing that I want to inspect are the effects. So here you see all of these effects, they all look really great. And for example, let's inspect this one. So let's do that one and stop. And here we see how they're using the standard particle system. So in this case, this demo is not using the VFX ref. So these are normal standard particles. You can see it's all like this, it's got emission, shape, color, noise, render, and so on. There's a whole bunch of really cool effects in this demo. So definitely download it and look at them to see how they work. And of course, there's the dragon scene, which features very much of the same thing. So tons of sprite shapes, studio lights, trails, effects. And then for the dragon itself, which is set up just like the characters. So it's got all kinds of bones. It's set up using the PSD importer and it's got all these handles with some really nice IK. Okay, so there you have it. These sample projects are an excellent way to see how Unity themselves use their tools and everything that is possible to make. Go ahead, download the project file and inspect it for yourself. Depending on what game you're making, this can be a great case study to learn how to use these tools. And don't forget to check out the Asset Store Spring Sale and get some awesome assets at a nice discount. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.